I've waited for so long for this. Hey folks, Atlas here again. Uh, I have for you a standard Grand Blue deck profile. So uh, Grand Blue was my first clan way back in the day when Mandard first started. And uh, Bass Kirk wasn't that good <laughs> back then. He was really terrible, but now he's good. So I built the deck because of course. Um, so Guiding Zombies, your starter, your only option, right on top of him, draw a card. Um, let's see, four copies of Kingdom Demonic Seas Bass Kirk, and yes, they're all SVR, because fuck you, I can do what I want. Um, so 12k, grade 3, protect gift. Uh, during your turn, if you have 10 or more cards in your drop zone, he gets uh, plus 5k in a crit at all times. And then the other skills, once per turn, you can counterblast, soul blast, call a card from your drop zone, and then he gets 5k for each grade of the card you call. So if we call it grade 1, it's 5k. If you call it grade 3, it's 15k. Um, this is a very important skill because it lets you load up your field every turn, and it lets you... The main thing is calling Skull Dragon so you can put a bunch of pressure on the opponent. Having a crit at all times is very good because that means that the danger zone goes from 4 damage to 3 damage, um, which is very nice for a Protect clan. Uh, what's also good about Grand Blue in general is that unlike OTT, you don't have to be rewriting every turn to do things. Um, OTT, you want to rewrite the Imperial Daughter so you can get the 15k and a crit every turn, but this you can just... Like, if you don't see it more than once, you'll, you might be okay. Uh, typically the sweet spot is 2 because, you, you know, you want to use the Protect Gift to kind of carry you further into the game, but uh, otherwise, yeah, this thing's freaking fantastic, and I love the way the SVR looks. Um, Alright, we got four copies of Dragon Undead Skull Dragon. So, uh, from hand, you can't be normal called, and then also on van or rear during your turn, gets plus 2k for each card in your drop zone. And lastly, at the end of the battle that it attacked on a rear guard circle, you kill him. So, on paper, this looks like complete butt, but, um, one, he's got the Protect Gift, which means if you got to ride him, it's not the end of the world because you're at least getting power for everything in your drop zone. So you can use the Protect Gift to kind of liaise on you into Bast Herc. Um, another good thing about this is because this still is Vanguard and Rear Guard, uh, to get, you know, both. Riding this when the opponent is at 5 damage is really, really funny because now you have, like, a dude attacking for... Uh, like, alright, I'm attacking for 64k with my Vanguard. Like, that's a lot more intimidating when you're at 5 than, you know, 32 with a crit is with Bast Kirk. Um, another nice thing about running 4 is that with things like Evil Shade, you can do what I, uh, what I call the Double Dragon. Well, I'm sure a lot of people call it that, but the, where you have Skull Dragons on both sides, and then you have Bast Kirk in the middle, so you have, like, alright, 32, and then put triggers on sides and, like, 64, 60, uh, you know, 66, that kind of thing. So, it's, uh, it's a very intimidating rear guard. The fact that it kills itself isn't that big a deal. Um, also a great discard target for your protect gift. But uh, yeah, otherwise pretty solid card. If it didn't have the power on Vanguard Circle, it would kind of be hot butt, but it does, so thank god. Um, one copy of Violence Flanger. So on a uh, node gift, but he's a uh, grade 3 with 12k, and then on Vanna Rear you can Soul Blast a grade 3, discard any number of cards from your hand, and he gets plus 5k till end of turn. For the battle that he attacked, your opponent can't call Sentinels with the same, uh, Sentinels or cards with uh, the same grade as the things you discarded. So, if you just do the Soul Blast grade 3, that means you shut off Protect Gifts and, you know, draw PGs or regular PGs, if that happens to be what the guy's running. Um, but what you want to do typically is go 0, 1, 2, and then they can't guard with literally anything. Um, unless you're in premium, but this is in premium, so fuck it. Uh, you don't really run more than one copy because it kind of tends to be a win more card. But against other protect clans, it's very useful because it makes their hand not matter. Um, so this is why he's at 1. Uh, I don't run Negro Breach because it does essentially the same thing as Stole Dragon, where you want it to be a big beat stick, and getting the extra Protect Gift doesn't really do much for you. That said, once Murakumo comes out in English, that might be different, but uh, as of now, you don't run Negro Breach as a grade 3. Um, four copies of Ruin Shade. So, 
on Van der Rear, when it attacks Vanguard, you can mill two cards from the top of your deck, and she gets plus 4k for the battle. And then during your turn, if you have 10 or more cards in your drop zone, she gets plus 4k. So this is great early game because it lets you build up your drop zone for that lucky 10 for Bastard. Um, and then once you get past 10, it, she's hitting for 17, which means uh, you can hit, protect, and excel Vanguards without any boost for numbers, which is very, very good. Um, you can also use it to... Like, all right, so if she's hitting for 17, and then you have your, like, an 8k boost behind her, she's 25, which is numbers against force. And then if it's Romario, which I'll get to in a bit, it's 29, which, again, numbers against force. Um, or if you don't want to mill, it's uh, 13 and 12, so that's 25, so it's still numbers. So this thing is incredibly flexible and incredibly important. And uh, run four or die trying, so... Say four copies of Commodore Blue Blood. Um, so during your turn, if you have another copy and drop, he gets plus 4k, so that means he can hit force vanguards on his own. Um, and then if he hits a vanguard, you can retire him to draw two cards and discard a card. So you don't really use this past the early and mid game because as they get closer to five, the opponent doesn't really care about you, you know, loading up your drop zone. Um, it is a lot of nice pressure to, like, if you got two of these, call them early. And then the opponent goes, all right, well, I don't want him to cycle through his deck and get more cards in his drop zone. So you put a lot of pressure on them early, um, and then otherwise you can just intercept them out of the way. There's something that want to be in your drop zone. Um, honestly, if we ever get something more broken than this, this is probably going to be the first to go. But as of now, it's quite a good card for setting up your drop zone and... Uh, you know, being able to hit numbers on his own without much help. And also because he wants another copy and drops on, that's why he's at four. I know some decks run three, but I think the consistency of having the other one in drop zone is important. Three copies of Captain Night Mist. So, uh, when he's placed on rear, you can counterblast one and call a grade one or less card from drop zone. If you have ten or more cards when you do the still, you can call any grade. Um, so early game, this means you can call things like Norman the Ghosty to, uh, help set up your drop and give power to stuff. Uh, in later game, you can call, uh, Dragon without having to use Soul. Uh, I had this at four for a while, but I ended up cutting it for an extra Soul Dragon because I, I think you run out of Soul faster, or you run out of Counter Blast faster than you run out of Soul, so this was something that was competing for that. Um, also, the cool thing about Grand Blue is that on call skills, you can reuse them because you can intercept and then call them back anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, st still a very good card, but um, I cut it down to three a few nights ago and it didn't really. There was no negative impact, so it's been working out okay so far. Um, let's see, four copies of Dandy Dyer Mario. Uh, this is. I think, arguably, aside from Bastard, the most important card in the deck. Um, so, if on rare, if you have 10 or more cards in your drop zone, he gets 4k. All the time, by the way. So, if this happens to be in the front row, he's just a 12k on the opponent's turn for no reason. Um, and then also, when you ride on top of him, you can counterblast, put a card from hand in his soul, put three cards from the top of your deck to your drop zone, and return one card from your drop zone to your hand. So, this plays the same role as uh, Circle Magus in OTT, where you want to ride this first so you can, you know, kickstart whatever it is you're trying to do. I hate that you got to put a card from hand to soul, and so it's not like a hard plus like Circle Magus is, but at the same time, it allows you to load up your soul to do... You get one more turn of Bastard calls, so uh, it's good for that. It's also good for, like, um, if you happen to guard early, or if you take damage and you heal stuff early, then that means that this allows you to pick from a larger smorgasbord of cards in your drop zone. So, very, 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 very good card. And uh, it's probably not going to be run at less than 4, unfortunately. Also, being a 12k booster is nothing to scoff at, so neat. Um, four copies of Dancing Cutlass. So this is our one and only counter charge engine. Um, from drop zone, you can bind another Dancing Cutlass from drop, uh, and mill a card, and then call him to rear and counter charge. So you have to run four of these because that means you get three instances of binding. And what it, how that works is, let's say you have, you know, have them in the drop zone. You bind one, call another, counter charge, and let's say, like, 
uh, what a lot of people will do is they'll call over this so it goes back in. So now you got three again. So you bind one, call another, counter charge, call over again, or it gets retired or whatever else you want to do. Bind the last one, call over, call it counter charge. So that's four instances of, or three instances of getting the counter charge. So that's why you want uh, four. And then also uh, this behind Bass Kirk makes it so he hits numbers against force because 17 plus six is 23. Uh, so that's nice to kind of just put this behind Vanguard and not have to worry about it. Um, super important, if we ever get some other kind of counter charge engine, maybe this will be the first to go. But as of now, it is a very, very important card. And uh, I'm jealous of Mega Colony for how much how much counter charge they have, believe it or not. Um, three copies of Norman the Ghosty. Uh, so from rear, you can retire him and mill two cards from the top of your deck, and one of your other units gets plus 10k. So this is very important in the early and mid game because it lets you uh, speed your way to 10. It also, uh, like, this is something you want to guard with early, because then it goes to drop, you can call it back with Night Mist, then kill it, mill two more, give 10k somewhere. Um, the, typically where you're going to put it, put it on is either the Night Mist so it can hit something, like if if the opponent rode to grade three first, or again on Bass Kirk because then that's another uh, card to two cards out of the opponent's hand um, in order to guard Bass Kirk's crit. So this is uh, you know very good common. Two copies of Evil Shade. Um, so a little asterisk with this. There is a card revealed as a promo a few days ago called Samurai Spirit. I'll put the picture over here. Um, Samurai Spirit is something along the lines of you can Soul Blast, retire something, call it back, and it gets 3k, which makes it an 11 for the turn. And my friends Vince and I were testing it, and it turns out it's great for getting rid of this in order to uh, reuse it quicker. And then also an 11k booster behind Vanguard is basically the same role as Cutlass, where it's another 5k. So that can be two to three cards out of the opponent's hand. Um, now with uh, Evil Shade... Evil Shade still is you can counter blast, bind a card from drop zone, and call a card with the same name as the thing you bound uh, to rear. So that's not to be underestimated. I'm not saying cut it completely, but uh, it ha does have kind of a limited role because it's uh, it's slower than Night Mist and slower than Bass Kirk, which makes it kind of a last resort for calling things. That said, uh, that's why I upped Dragon to four, so you can, you know, if you have to... Like, you ran out of soul or something, which, again, that can happen. But, yeah, this uh, this dude is pretty good for what it is. I'm probably going to replace at least one with the Samurai Spirit, but for now, does the job fine. Let's see. Four copies of Gustian. So, it's your draw PG. Does exactly what you need it to do. <laughs> um, some people do 7-5 because Grand Blue does, doesn't really draw as much as uh, OTT does, and that is something to consider, but I do like the uh, the E-Crit 4 draw thing we got going on right now. Um, it's either that or more draws, there's not really any other option. <laughs> and then lastly, 4 heals because heals. Um, and for the gifts, I thought I'd, like, I don't know if you remember the Tachikaze video where, like, one side was... Uh, Data Rex, the other side was the Excel gift. I tried that with Bass Kirk and like the normal Protect gift, but that doesn't quite work as well. Because <laughs> on one side, you're like, okay, he's got a Protect gift, and then you put it down, and it doesn't really look any different. But uh, whatever, I guess this is just my thing now, where you have the, the non active part facing the opponent, and then when it's being used, you turn it over. Um, so yeah, that was the the Grand Blue deck profile. I'm not gonna do premium Grand Blue because uh, I don't want to spend all the money on that. But I am gonna do something else in premium later once that happens. So uh, yeah, rate, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time.